Here we have a 1967 Triumph 500cc Daytona, also known as a T100R. 67 was the first year for the Triumph Daytona. It only came to America that year. Some interesting features about the T100R Daytona are that it never actually even said Daytona in 1967. It still just said Tiger 100 as it was known in all the other countries. Only in the American sales literature did it say Triumph Daytona. This particular example is an all original paint, numbers matching, I'd say maybe roughly 98% stock motorcycle. The only things that aren't really stock on it are the seat, which has been replaced. And really, that's probably about it. Still has all the original paint on all the body panels. It's numbers matching. It still has its original monoblock amyl carburetors. It has both its original speedometer and tack. Still has all its original rims, exhaust, and as I said previously, it is all numbers matching. What I've done to the bike since I've owned it is a complete top end. I had the cylinders nicka sealed to bring them back to standard size. I did not want to go overboard. New pistons and rings. And other than that, the bike has always run beautifully. As you can see, it still has its original Amel model blocks, where only the left-hand carburetor has a full float chamber. The one on the right-hand side, which is hard to see, has what they call a chopped float ball chamber. It needs some new fork gaiters installed, which I'm gonna to try to get to this winter. But otherwise, I pretty much just ride this bike. It's ridden regularly. It pretty much always starts on the first or second kick. It is a 500cc four speed. Obviously it shifts on the wrong side, but it is a great running and great riding motorcycle. So stay tuned as I take you along for a ride. All right, so let me take you through a cold start of this 1967 Triumph Daytona. It has not been run in actually several months. Okay, there are two fuel taps, one on each side. One is your primary, main, and one is your reserve. I pretty much always just turn both fuel taps on. Turn both fuel taps on. Let some gas start to flow into the carburetor. As I said previously, this only has one traditional float chamber and there is a primer button. So we'll give it some prime. So we get some fuel flowing. We'll give it a couple kicks to try to break the clutch loose. There's a clutch plate the clutch plates will stick on a Triumph from lack of use. I have no choke on this bike. We'll turn on the ignition. Let's see if she'll start right up for us. Oh, almost.
As you can tell, she is a little bit cold-blooded on these chilly Pennsylvania days. But she will settle into a nice, even loop idle. Takes a little while sometimes for both cylinders to kick in due to that weird AMOL monoblock system with one carburetor not having a real float chamber. But once running, these bikes ran great. They like to be revved. They don't like to lope around at low idle or low RPMs. They like to be run. So why don't we take her out for a little ride?
So I hope you guys all enjoyed that nice little ride through some Pennsylvania back roads in the nice fall uh, with all the beautiful colored leaves and whatnot. But anyway, um, in case I didn't point it out earlier, some of the things that were unique to the Triumph Daytona as opposed to some of the other models of 500cc they made was the fact that it did come with dual carbs, dual amyl mono blocks for the very first year. Every year after that got amyl concentric carburetors and it came with both a speedometer and a tachometer, which the single carb models normally only came with a speedometer. I don't know if some of you may have noticed during the video that my tack was acting a little bit odd, jumping to like 9,000 RPMs and stuff. No, I was not revving it that high. It appears, of course, when you decide to shoot a video, something decides it's time to break. So either the cable is bad or maybe I need the tack to be rebuilt. So we will address that over the winter. One of the things unique about owning a vintage Triumph motorcycle or any vintage British motorcycle is you better be prepared to do some maintenance because it will require maintenance. It's not like a Japanese bike where you just hop in and go. It will require you to put some love into it, but they reward you with one fantastic ride. They were great handling motorcycles. They were fast for their time and they're just a joy to ride all around. Very mechanical, very pleasing. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more content to come.